with God speaking to us. It's, uh, that was God. That was God. But I want us this morning to be able to look at communion. We're going to have communion service. Most often I have communion on Sunday nights. And, and maybe that's partly because of me as a pastor feeling like so much time restriction sometimes on Sunday in the mornings. Not that I feel like you do it. Um, but I feel like sometimes, you know, there's, there's a part of the clock that I'm lucky to be able to get out at a certain time. Because I, I respect that. That's just how I am. I don't believe <clears throat> God. If God's moving, I'm going to stay here. But I also respect you and, and knowing that Sundays are, is, is for God. But it, it's also meals and family and things. I understand all that. So, but Sunday morning, I wanted to do this. Uh, to be able to have a time for us to have communion together. We'll have communion again on Sunday night, Easter Sunday night service. Um, but as we are entering into this uh, this holy season, and I do think it's holy, uh, we think about Christmas, and there's a spirit of Christmas prior to Christmas coming. How do we enjoy that? The same thing with Easter. It's a very holy moment as we think about what Christ has done for us and the God that we serve. That He's no longer uh, on a cross. He's no longer in, in, in a, a grave somewhere. Uh, but He is a resurrected Savior. Amen. He's completed the work. He died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins because He loves humanity. Amen. He's, he's, he's resurrected from the grave because He kept those promises that He would be there three days and three nights. You may figure it out on the American calendar from Friday to Saturday. It doesn't look right. But when you look at the Jewish calendar, it lines up perfectly with what Christ has said. And so as, as we look at communion this morning, I want to look at what does communion mean to us? And uh, we, we look at communion and we look at 1 Corinthians chapter number 20, uh, 11, verse number 23. If you would like to turn there in your Bibles with me. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 11. I'm going to read what Paul gives us. It's a reflection of the gospel writer and what transpired. We're going to look at that for a few moments prior to taking communion. We're going to take a few minutes to examine ourselves because that's what communion is about. It's about examining ourselves and making sure we're in right by standing with God. So Paul writes and he says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you. These instructions weren't from Paul, but these instructions uh, were from, from God. Amen. Concerning the Lord's Supper, communion, or with, what you may know it by a host of different titles. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which He was betrayed, took bread. So He's observing, he's recalling these events that took place that was very sacred. You know, when we look at Jesus giving his life's blood, what happened there at that last supper, his betrayal, his being led away to Calvary, his being crucified upon the cross, his being laid in a borrowed tomb, his resurrection, that is all very sacred. That God Almighty, the God of this universe, would robe himself in flesh and come down to save humanity. The Word of God says, And when He had given thanks, He break it, breaking the bread, and He said, Take, eat. Amen. This is uh, my body, which is broken for you. We'll talk more about it throughout the morning, but the broken bread was representation of the body of Jesus Christ, which was broken. 
He was beaten with a cat of nine tails, that whip that had glass, everything sharp upon it, that when he came in contact with his skin, they would pull it and it would just, it would lacerate uh, the body, his back. When you look at Christ upon the cross of Calvary, there are many pictures that are painted of, of him and, 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 and for good reason I believe the artist didn't paint it in such a way in which it was because it was grotesque. It, it was a man who had his inwards hanging out. It was a man who was beaten beyond all, all recognition. Uh, uh, his body broken. His beard plucked up, pulled out. Uh, it, it, the the, the, the uh, uh, plaited thorn of crowns upon his head pushed deep into his, his, his brow. Uh, it was beaten. His body was, uh, it, it was swollen beyond all recognition. So his body was broken. He said, this do you, this do in remembrance of me. So as believers, when we partake of the bread that is broken, it is a reminder to us of the brokenness of the body of Jesus Christ. He was broken that we could be made whole. Amen. He was broken so that we could be made whole. <clears throat> Everyone in here has felt brokenness at one time or another in your life. It's because of the effects of sin. But sin leaves lives broken. But Jesus Christ has a way of putting us back together piece by piece. Amen. And He makes us whole. Amen. Praise God. After the same manner also he took the cup. And when he had stopped saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. It's a new covenant. It's, it's, it's ratified by the, uh, the shedding of, of Jesus' own blood. Amen. And it forever satisfies the debt of sin. If you don't pay your bills, there's going to be a debt collector on your door. They're going to be wanting that. You don't pay your taxes, they'll garnish your wages. They're going to get it because they want the debt. They want it to be paid. Amen. Aren't you glad that the debt of sin, the enemy may lie to you and remind you of your failures, but the debt of sin has been paid through the blood of Jesus Christ. We were all born in sin. Our flesh, uh, uh, its nature wants to sin. The only thing that can satisfy the wrath of God and the judgment of God is the blood of Jesus Christ. And it satisfies in full. How many of you have ever paid off a car? How many ever paid off your house? How many ever paid off your student loan? And when you get that, 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 that uh, receipt that says, paid in full, Wow, what a relief it is. Amen. And that's what Jesus Christ has done for you and I. He has paid in full sin's debt because He loves us. Amen. He makes a way for us to live free of sin. Amen. He makes a way for us to live free of the guilt of sin. Amen. He makes a way for us to get to go to heaven because He's paid it in full. He says, this duty is oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. We need to never forget what Christ has done for us. Amen. For as oft as you uh, eat of this bread and drink of this cup, there's symbolic gestures. I'll get more to that in just a few moments. You do show the Lord's death till he comes. Folks, Jesus is coming again. Mm -hmm. He is coming again. Amen. Brother David and I, we were talking this morning. Do you look at the news and all that's going on? The Muslim mosque, the coming against uh, uh, folks, uh, the hating of Jews, uh, the world and where it is. Do you know what? It's in chaos. Do you know why it's in chaos? Because it's a big finger pointing to something that Jesus is coming. The signs of the time are everywhere. I mean, when we're naming evil good and, 
and, and we're naming good evil, and we're living life upside down, amen, Jesus is coming. And so this morning we're saying something to God. When we're getting ready to take this bread, we'll partake of it, we'll drink of the cup. We're showing that Jesus is coming back. And Jesus said this. He said, one day in my Father's kingdom, we will eat of this bread and drink of this cup together. Amen. It's a reminder that one day we do it as a small body, but one day we're going to do it with a big body of believers, of saints down through the ages, and the one who his body was broken and whose blood was spilled. Amen. He'll conduct it. It won't be a pastor conducting, but Jesus himself will conduct it when we eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Jesus is coming again. But let's be mindful of something. He said, Whosoever shall eat of this bread and drink of this cup unworthily. That means that it must be done with consistency and intention. That we have the blood of Jesus Christ applied to our life. And that we're examining our lives and making sure that what we do is in accordance to God's word and that we trust Him. In a world of crazy, God still requires His people to live holy. And so our desire should be to live holy. He says... For whosoever drinks unworthy shall be guilty of the, uh, of the body and the blood of the Lord. That means we'll be coming under the judgment of God if we don't do it in a holy, sanctified way. And so he says, let a man examine himself. What is the reason why you're taking of this bread and you're taking of this cup? What is the reason? Is it because everybody else is doing it? Is it because it's just something routine you think you need to do because of church? Is it something that's done just haphazardly? If it is, examine yourself. Correct yourself or refrain from the cup and the bread. Because we should be desirous by faith knowing that Jesus Christ has shed His blood and His body was broken for us. And we do it as an act of faith that says, Jesus, I'm ready for that day when You're coming back. I'm ready for Your kingdom. I'm ready for the day when I'll eat of this bread and drink of this cup with You. The Bible says, for who, who, who eats and drinks unworthily, eats and drinks damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Amen. We need to be conscious this morning of what this is about. This is about Calvary. This is about God's Son giving His life. This is about discerning His body properly. The Bible says, For this cause many are sick and, and weak among you sleep. And so we are to judge ourselves that we wouldn't be judged of Him. So communion, this do in remembrance of me. When he says that, it's calling for a calling to mind, a thinking, remembering why we are doing this. I think it's interesting for us to remember tonight that when Jesus first broke that bread and gave them that cup to drink, he did it on a night that was called Passover. Passover was this. It's still celebrated in the Jewish tradition. Understand something this morning. The Jews, most Jewish people that are not Messianic Jews, and that's the only way I know to really describe them to you this morning, but those who practice Jewish tradition doesn't accept Jesus as the Messiah. And therefore, they accept nothing of the New Testament. They live strictly by the Old Testament. 
They live by things that are kosher. You look at them, the way that they eat, the way that they conduct things, it's all done by the Jewish calendar, and they don't accept Jesus as the Messiah. So when they practice Passover, they're not celebrating a resurrected Savior. They're practicing, they're remembering what happened in Egypt. Amen. They, 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 they reject Jesus as the Messiah unless they're a Messianic Jew, which means that they believe in the work of Jesus Christ and they've accepted Jesus as their Savior. But I need to tell you something this morning, that because you and I, when the Jews rejected Him, Jesus gave the Gospel to the Gentiles, and now you and I are grafted in, and we're one of God's people as well. All because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And so when we remember this, we remember that there in Egypt they were. They were held in captivity. But God promised. Uh, uh, he said, you will always be held in captivity. It's a golden cage. I'm putting you there for a reason. But I'm going to release you. And so on the night of the release, God told them to take a lamb and they were to watch that lamb, the spotless lamb. And then they were to sacrifice that lamb. They were to have their clothes on, ready to go. They were to put the blood above the doorpost of their house. And everyone who did that, amen, when the death angel flew over, the eldest would not die. Amen. If they were Jews, but didn't have the blood clot, the eldest would still die. Yes. And so life comes. By the blood of the Lamb being applied. Communion is about the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. That when God's wrath is poured out, we have life. We have life. And so it's a remembrance. It's a remembrance of the blood of Jesus Christ. That there's a land that has greater power than that that was applied to the doorpost in Egypt. But the Lamb of God has given His life's blood. And He gives life to whoever applies the blood to their life and their heart. Remembrance. Communion. This do in remembrance of me. I said to you earlier, it's easy to get distracted in life by schedules, by our priorities getting mixed up. And so God calls us to have communion. Because this is a reminder of what's important. Amen. I know that life is busy. I know family times are important. I know jobs are important and schedules are important. We have things that we like to do because we have the good gift of life and the, the hobbies and talents. You know what the most important thing is to remember Jesus Christ and what he's done for us. And so this morning, it's a focus in to remember. How is communion different than the Catholic Church and even some things of the Lutheran Church? I'm not here this morning downing other churches. I'm here educating on what is doctrinally correct from the Word of God. All right? Don't get me wrong. I'm here because God has placed you here. And let's look at it from the Word of God. Some of you are maybe familiar with the Catholic doctrine. They have a little box in their church. It's called the Eucharist, the Tabernacle of the Eucharist. There's a light that can spring there all the time. So though very important for them to have what's called the sacraments. <coughs> They'll have that some folks daily. That, 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 that bread will be blessed by the priest and it will be called holy. This is an ordinance, not a sacrament, that Paul gives to us. If you go to catechism, if you're trained in uh, communion, uh, some folks will tell you to remember that when you take, when you take the bread, don't bite it. They say, don't bite baby Jesus. Because they believe in something called transubstantiation. They believe that that body, literally, that bread literally turns into the body of Jesus Christ. They believe that the, the wine literally turns into the blood of Jesus Christ. Nowhere in Scripture do you find that lining up. It is symbolic. And so as we take this bread, it is bread, it is symbolic of the blood of the body of Jesus Christ. The cup is symbolic of the blood of Jesus Christ. 
Some people will pray to, to the bread thinking that it turns into the, the body of Jesus Christ. Nowhere in Scripture will you find that lining up. It is symbolic. We pray to one man who is our mediator, and that is Jesus Christ. So as we take this broken bread, it reminds us of the brokenness of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that we have access to the Father through Jesus Christ. When we take the cup, it is a reminder that we live under a new covenant. It is called the dispensation of grace, where the grace of Jesus Christ saves us. It's not by our works. Amen. But it's by simple trust in the blood of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Taking this will not save you. But it is a reminder that when we put our confidence and our faith in Jesus Christ, just as the blood was applied to the doorpost in Egypt, it is a feast of freedom. The liar doesn't lie anymore. The stealer doesn't steal anymore. The murderer doesn't murder anymore. The coveter doesn't want for other people's stuff anymore. Because God has changed our life. The blood of Jesus Christ changes us. How can the drug addict be free? Through the blood of Jesus Christ. How can those who are bound by sin be free of that sin by the blood of Jesus Christ? Some of you were that. Paul gives a list of all different types of sins. Every one of us was. But God has changed us through His blood. And so it is a feast of freedom. I'm not bound by those sinful things anymore. So this morning... I want to call us in to a place of communion. Amen. What does communion mean? It means a fellowship. Because of the broken body of Jesus Christ and His spilled blood, we have fellowship with God. We're not strangers, we're not enemies to God anymore, but we're able to have communion with Him. It's a sacred moment this morning where us and God come together and we thank Him for saving our souls. And we talk with Him and we commune with Him and we remind ourselves that we're going to live faithfully for God. Amen. And we remind God that God, one day I'm going to sit in your kingdom and I'm going to break this bread and I'm going to drink of this cup with you. It is communion. But it is also communion with one another. We do it together. You, can you imagine what it was like, like on that candle at night as they were uh, together in that, 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 that upper room and as they were gathered together and they broke bread? The Lord is an eye. Uh, there, there was one who left because of betrayal. Amen. But there were 11 that was in one mind and one accord. They wanted to please Jesus. Amen. It's a reminder this morning that God has placed us together as Miracle Revival Church and we have a relationship with one another because of God Almighty and we're in this thing together. Amen. And we all want to get to God's kingdom together that we can break bread. It is it is communion. So this morning, Sister Holly, we come to the piano. I'm not sure how you want to do it. The only thing I ask is as many people as we can come forward, you can sit if it's more comfortable. If you feel better kneeling at the altar. You know, for me, it's not about me dictating to you. The only thing that I ask is that we do make a move to come forward somewhat to say, God, I'm coming to commune. As a step to say, I'm participating in this. Because God, I'm thankful for what you did for me on Calvary. I don't want this to become routine. I want this to be very special to us this morning. So if you would this morning, would you just begin to make your way either to the altar or to the front? And the Bible says, let a man examine himself.
So we're looking outward at what Christ has done for us. But this morning we're also looking at Lord God. I want to make sure there's nothing in my heart and in my life that is dishonoring to you. But God, I want to please you with every part of my being. So as Sister Holly begins to play, would you just bow your head? And would you take some time just to look in one thing? Amen at where you are with God this morning. Amen. Let's examine ourselves. That we don't do this frivolously, but we do this in a holy way. Amen. So take some time this morning to examine yourself. And then I'm going to call Brother Justin and Brother Craig to hand out the elements of communion. But let this be a sacred time of looking at ourselves. 